That business will recover. That destiny will recover. Because you have come to the God of all recovery. Second Kings 6 and verse 6. The axe head fell to the ground. And the prophet said, where did it fall? And threw the stick. And so I would say, and the axe head swam. Iron swam. It became fish. Wherever that thing has fallen, recovery is coming your portion. Will you go ahead and appreciate the God of recovery this morning? Go ahead and glorify him. Oh, what a day. A day of my breakthrough. Thank him for bringing you to his presence. Unto him shall the garden of his people be. Unto him shall the garden of his people be. Genesis 49, verse 9 and 10. Unto him shall the garden of his people be. Until Shiloh come. Unto him shall the garden of his people be. Lord, we have not gathered to any man this morning. We have gathered to our maker, our source, our helper, our socorro, our intercessor, our creator. It's to you we have gathered this morning. Show yourself on behalf of each one. Easy. Lift your voice and let's sing together. him in your life. Tell him to have his way. Tell him to be enthroned in your life. Ask him to be enthroned in your business. Ask him to be enthroned in the work of your hand. Ask him to have his way. 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 Bless his name. In Jesus mighty name we have given thanks. And Father, we thank you again. Because no one can come to you except you draw him. You brought us from everywhere to yourself this morning so that you can bless us. Therefore, we ask, O oh Lord, as we have come before you, show yourself on behalf of each one. Do what no one can do for somebody in this service today. Give that man, give that woman, give that business a breakthrough testimony today. By this service, let there be a landmark testimony. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And only the breakthrough person shout a big amen. amen. Will you put those hands together for Jesus as you have your seat? Are you really excited this morning? He said, Let them shout for joy. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy that 
favors his righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified that take a pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. When you are in his presence, God wants you to be excited. Because in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Psalm 16 and verse 11. And when you shout for joy, something follows you. And pleasures forever. Whatever represents pleasure in your business, pleasure in your career, pleasure in the work of your hand, God is stepping in for your pleasure this time. Amen. Whatever has broken down, like that scripture in 2 Kings 6, from verse 1 to 6, but verse 6 in particular, the asset fell down. The two of material, their asset fell down. There was a breakdown. But the prophet said, where did he fall? And when the word of the Lord came, the Bible says, he threw a stick and the access swam back again. Whatever has fallen in your business, fallen in the work of your hand, fallen in your career, whatever looks like everybody's looking, is making you to be pitiable before men, God is changing your story dramatically. Amen. Only that person that believes them hear your amen. amen. This service will answer to his name in your life. So you are welcome again to this special communion service and uh, covenant day of business breakthrough. And um, by that declaration, even if you are not in business, you will find a business. And everyone in business already, you are moving from mini to mega. From local to global. From national to international. Yeah. You are moving from thousands to multi-million. Yeah. That person is not hearing me at all. Yeah. You had a testimony that was shared in the first service. That man is a lawyer. He said he had breakdown. Nothing was happening. Everything was failing. But he came in contact with God's servant. And God's servant said, be blessed. And he said, Amen. He said, and the heaven opened. And he got a transaction to work on property and his service was paid for him about 150 billion. I don't know who you are. Don't give up. God is already in your boat. I said, God is already in your boat. In the name of Jesus. So we are welcome and I know you will return with a testimony. Amen. We like to remind us that it, this, the prophetic thing for the moment is supernatural breakthrough is my heritage. That means you don't have heritage to break down. Your heritage is not failure. <laughs> Your heritage is not defeat. Your heritage is not to just break down. In fact, you may break down now, but that's not your heritage. Psalm 24, verse 10. It says, if thou fail in the days of adversity, it's because your strength, Proverbs 24, verse 10. If you fail in the days of adversity, it's because your strength is small. But look at the good news. In verse, 20, verse 14, it says, even if the righteous fall seven times, he says, you shall not be utterly cast out. You will rise again. Amen. Whatever has broken down, I say rising again for somebody here. Amen. So you have heritage or breakthrough. Micah 7 and verse 8. He said, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. In case you see me fall down, my business is broken down, something is not working. In case you are mocking me and they are easing and they are making me a headline story, don't worry. That mockery will be turned to a testimony. Amen. Rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. He said, Even when I fail, when I fall, I will rise again. How and why? Because the Lord shall shine his light upon my part. As the word of God is coming this morning, the light. 
representing the presence of God. And God, and, and, and God declared in the beginning, let there be light and light turn around everything. That light of his word is bringing about your own turn around this morning. So, say with me again, supernatural breakthrough is my heritage. Heritage means what belongs to you, what is your right because of your relationship. In this kingdom, your heritage is breakthrough, not breakdown. So whatever was a breakdown is turning for you in this service as a breakthrough testimony. In our Sunday series, we'll be looking at unveiling the breakthrough power of love. Unveiling the breakthrough power of love. Unveiling the breakthrough power of love. Love for God is one key in this kingdom that makes you to break through. When you love God and you show it, God makes you to break through. Lovers of God are breakthrough candidates in this kingdom. When you subscribe for God's love and you show it in unmistakable terms, you are a candidate for breakthrough. Others may be breaking down. Things may be breaking down around you, but you are breaking through. And what is breakthrough? Breakthrough is having access in spite of the barrier. Breakthrough is commanding progress in spite of the resistance. That is breakthrough. No matter what the climate is saying, no matter what the resistance is, you are breaking through. That's what happened to Isaac. Genesis 26, and verse 12 to verse 14. Every farmer went back home. Every farmer failed. And because there was no rain, because there was farming, and the closing, and the threw in the towel. But that was the time Isaac began business. The Bible says, and the man went forward and became, very, the man was great in the midst of famine and went forward. Somebody, you are going forward this time. And grew until he became very great. And the Philistine, and he was a possessor of flocks, a possessor of herds, and great stores of servants. He was an employer of labor in the midst of famine, man. And the Philistine envied him for, for all the wells which his father, which his father's servant did dig in the day of, of, uh, of Abraham, his father, the Philistine stopped it and filled it with the earth. Now look at the next verse, verse 16. And Abimelech, the king of the Philistine, <laughs> He said to this one man, one man, one covenant child, one covenant person. He said to one man, go from us, Isaac, for thou art mightier than we. You one man, you are bigger than our nation. You are a threat to us. We cannot handle you. We are breaking down. You are breaking through. We cannot explain you. That will be somebody in this service this morning. You are breaking through. If you read further down to verse 22, the Bible says, and they, they blocked the well. Isaac dug another one. They broke the well, and Isaac dug another one. They blocked the well five times. And Isaac got to a place. It's called Rehoboat. The Lord gave him rest. The, God, the Lord created room for him. Verse 22. And he moved from thence and dug another well. Listen to me. In the covenant, when they block your access, it is an it is seven opportunity to, to start again. The dog, well, he, they blocked it. And he brought, the Bible says, he dug, I like to read that scripture. And he dug another well. For they were, they strove not for the straw not, and he called the name of the place Rehoboth, and he said, "For now the Lord has has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in this land." 
in this nation, Nigeria, you shall be fruitful. In Imo State, Nigeria, you shall be fruitful. You become unstoppable. That's what it makes to be a breakthrough entity. But for you to be a breakthrough entity, in this kingdom, if the God of breakthrough must work for you and make you to break through, is to, to break through is to be on top of the water when they thought you should have sunk. That's breakthrough. You are on top when they think that you should be sinking. That's breakthrough. They did everything against Isaac, but the more they try, the more they fail. I don't know who is trying and what is trying to stop you. It will turn to your advantage for advancement. So shall it be. Love for God is what makes for breakthrough. Now when we talk about this love, showing the interest of, for God and his kingdom, that's what we're talking about. Showing the interest for God and his kingdom. Love of God is an active love. It's not a passive love. If you love God, it will show. And if you love him, you become a candidate for breakthrough. In that first Corinthians 2 and verse 9. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard. Neither has it come to the heart of anyone. What God has prepared for them that love him. There are people that are looking for something. There are some people that the things have been prepared for. When you are God's lover and you demonstrate his love in unusual terms, you become a candidate for breakthrough. The things that is failing in the hands of others be begin to walk in your hand. Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard. What God has prepared for them that love him. Underline that word love. So love for God makes you to secure unusual breakthrough testimony. What more? That scripture speaking in Romans 8 and verse 28. All things work together for the good of them that love God to them that call according to his purpose. That means even when things are meant to work to stop them, the things work to open doors for them. That's what happened to Isaac. Everything they did, this man became a threat to a little nation. And the good news I have for you is, you have the same link with Isaac because you are a child of the covenant. I see breakthrough becoming your portion. So love for God makes you to command breakthrough on the earth. The question is, do you love God? If you love God, it will show. How will it show? By you having interest in what God has interest for. What does God have interest for? The interest of God is souls. Souls. Titus 2 and verse 4. He said, he want all men saved. He want all men saved. He want all men saved. He said, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of his truth. Matthew 16 and verse 26 it says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Souls of men matters to God. I like someone to know here this, in this service, you are not on this ad by chance. If I listen to me, the reason why they call you ambassadors in this scripture, in this kingdom, is because you are the extension of God's kingdom in your street, in your marketplace, in your neighborhood. Second Corinthians 5, verse 20, 21, it says, ye are ambassadors. Look at it. Second Corinthians 5, 20 to 21, please. It said, now we, are we among them? If you are among them, let me hear your Amen. Tell me ambassadors of Christ. Now, what is an ambassador? Ambassador is God's mouthpiece. He is a representative of a country. If you see that person, you have seen the country. Everything that country represents. Divine health, breakthrough, everything. That is what is in that man. 
Along the First World War began by the death of an ambassador. They killed an ambassador and they said, no, you can't kill. You touch an ambassador, you have touched the nation. Do you know that in an embassy, when in this country, for instance, let's say Iran or let's say U.S., if you are pursuing a person in this country and it runs into an embassy, Nigeria police don't have the power to enter. International protocol forbids it. Except they bring him out. If they don't, he can be staying in that place for 20 years and he's still in your country and you can't arrest him. It's to tell you how covered you are as an ambassador. How much more you, an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. That's who you are. But listen to me. You are, look, if they call you chief driver and all the vehicles in the, ha, in the, in the, in the company is grande, what, what are you? You are a title carrier without function. You are not an ambassador as an emblem. You are an ambassador by function. Look at the function. Look at it now. Look at the function. Look at the function. He said, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. That means you are drawing people to God. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Look at the next verse. Verse 22 now. Now we made the righteousness of God in him. Now if you read the verse before then, he said, we are to reconcile the world back to God. And that's why you are called ambassador. So our job as an ambassador is to tell somebody, Jesus does not want you to be and remain in that sickness. He saved me from sickness. So I want to tell you that Jesus can heal you. Can I pray for you? Now as you are praying for him, I want you to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Jesus does not want you to, be, to break down. He wants you to break through. He made Peter to break through. He made my life to break through. Can I pray with you? Can you... Will you like to receive him as your Lord and Savior and become a breakthrough entity? So we are ambassadors to reconcile the world, not ambassador to pose. No, an ambassador to function as a soul winner. I want to believe ambassadors are here this morning. If you are an ambassador of Christ, let me hear your affirmation of amen. amen. That means this week, somebody will hear your testimony and give his life to Christ. This week, why they are complaining all around you? You say, come, can I just pray over that issue? When an ambassador makes a statement, the nation has made a statement. Every statement you make gets a confirmation from heaven. This week, many souls shall be saved by your hand. So how do you prove that you love God? By being an ambassador. And how do you function as an ambassador? By winning souls. In that verse 19, that 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 5 and verse 19, he said you are to reconcile the war back to God. You are rec to reconcile the war back to God. That means you are telling the world, look, you don't have to go that way. There's hope for you in Christ. There's life for you in Christ. Eternity is real. Some people tell you that life is so short. I can just, so that's why I, I want to just, I want to just spoil it. I've heard people say that. I just want to do anything. It's too short. Though. I can't be, I can't be. I... Now listen to me. Life is so short compared to what? You have two eternity. Eternity to heaven or eternity to hell. Hebrew 9 and verse 27. is appointed to man wants to die and after their judgment. That's the end. It's why you are alive. You have the power of choice. Let that person know that. Excuse me. This thing you are running after, running after the car, running after marriage, running after, running after gold, running after money, it will remain here. If you like, live 100 years. Eternity is years without end. And it's only while you are alive, you can make your choice. I've been to many, many funerals. Look, look, look. That man in that coffin has no more choice. He may have the best, the great, the, the, all the money in the bank, 
He may have the greatest certificate, the best all graduating student, but he's there. He may have the best clothes. It's because you are alive that you have choice. So tell the person, look, don't spoil your choice. Don't waste your life. There's hope after the grave. Would you like me to pray with you? Let us pray. I don't know who that person is. Between now and next Sunday, you will prove your love for God. Yeah. I did not hear you at all. Yeah. How will you prove it? By reaching out to somebody. In 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 8, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 8, it said, this is the proof of my love. This is the proof of their love. They prove their sincerity of their love by acting. So don't just smoke. Act by soul winning. And I see the love of God manifest in your life. Now quick, quick, quickly, what is love? In our definition here, love is simply placing God above all things else. Placing God above every other else, including yourself. Making God above and you being the subject. Putting everything in subjection to God. Making God supreme in your life. That's love. That's love. Making God rule to have his ultimate place in your life. In Luke 6 and verse 44, 40, Luke 6 verse 40, he said a disciple, Jesus was speaking to the disciples. He said, the disciples, a, a disciple, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is prophet shall be a master. That means put him in above all that you do in your thoughts, in your action, giving God the priority in your life, making him first. That woman was going to prepare the last meal. He said, Make for me first. First King 17 and verse 13. Make for me first, making God first, 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 first. That is the proof of your love for God. Now, what does love have to do with breakthrough? How does love bring about breakthrough? John 14, verse 21 and verse 23. John 14. When you love him, God works for you. Two, God works with you. Three, God works through you. He works for you. He works with you. He works through you. That talks about God's presence. And every time God's presence appears, everything happens in the positive. For a lover. The presence of God is the backbone of all breakthrough. The presence of God is the backbone of all breakthrough. John 14 and verse 21 and 23. Look at it quickly. I'd like us to read together. He that had my commandment and keep them is he that loveth me. How many lovers do I have here? Then what will I do? He will love me. Uh, he, he, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and make and manifest myself in him. If you are in a battle and God manifests, what do you think will happen? God will come as a warrior. If you are in need, and you need financial breakthrough and God manifest, what will happen? It's called all sufficiency. The art is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that do it therein. If you are having challenge in your health and God manifests, he, he manifests as Jehovah Rapha. This time, I don't know who that person is, God will manifest for you. Amen. He walks in you, he walks with you, he walks through you and works for you. Verse 23, look at it. He said, if you love him, this is what you start to gain for breakthrough. And Jesus said, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will keep my words. He will obey my words. And my father will love him. And we will come, that is 
heaven's visitation. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. Did you see what happened to Joseph? That means you will become God's residence. Your business will become God's residence. That's what happened to Joseph. Anywhere you throw Joseph, God follows him. God went to prison because of Joseph. He went to prison because of Joseph. Genesis 39 verse 20, 21. He went to prison and the law was with Joseph in the prison and he was a prosperous man. He was a prosperous man in the prison. There's nowhere you are, even if you're in the wilderness. If God is with you, breakthrough is inevitable. I don't know who you are. As you demonstrate his love, I see God showing himself concerning your life, Amen. concerning your business, concerning the work of your hand. You can't have God as your break backbone and break down in, in your endeavor. You cannot have God as your backbone and break down in your, in your endeavor. They may try, but listen to me, you cannot be cast out. You cannot. Because God is for you. He said, who can be against you? If it's for you, it is love of God that engenders God to you. So what are the things that, that you benefit by your love for God that brings about breakthrough? Number one is it enhances access to wisdom from above. There are four levels of wisdom. According to James 3, um, verse 16 to verse 17, verse 15 to 17, there are four levels of wisdom. There is earthly wisdom, that's common sense. There is intellectual wisdom, that is academic sense, scientific sense. There is devilish wisdom, that's occultic sense. But there is, it's above, it's a, uh, this wisdom descends not from above. That means there is a wisdom from above. The wisdom from above takes you above. It takes you above every of man's limitation. One of the things you enjoy when you walk in, in the love of God, you demonstrate his love, he gives you wisdom. And wisdom is the terminator of sweat. Wisdom is the mother of creation. You cannot be wise and not go high. Wisdom is what makes you to break through without sweat. Noiseless breakthrough. You know, you can have victory in battle and you still have bruises. Wisdom is what makes you to fight and it looks like you are watching film in your own fight. Can you see wisdom of Jehoshaphat? Second Kings, Second Chronicles 20, verse 20, down to verse 27. He engaged divine wisdom. Wisdom is doing according to the will of God to get the desired result. It's knowing the right thing and doing it. When you, and you say, I discovered that wisdom is synonymous to breakthrough. You can't be wise and not breakthrough. Every wise person in scripture are breakthrough entity. Wisdom. He said, wisdom is mightier than the weapons of war. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 18. is mightier than the weapons of war. Wisdom. He said, wisdom, <laughs> it, it casts down the confidence it takes over the city. That your business is leaving the local to the global this time. I don't, I'm not sure I'm hurrying very well. Today. One of the things you stand to gain when you demonstrate the, the love of God is wisdom. God gives you wisdom. He gives you wisdom. He gives you wisdom. That's how Solomon got fame. By the love of God. Solomon loved the Lord. Uh, 1 King 3, and verse 3 to 9. 1 King 3, verse 3 to 9. And because he loved God, God said, Now, Solomon, you will not just love me for nothing. And I've seen what you have done by your love. Now I will give you wisdom. And God said, Look, the wisdom I will give you, no one of your, of your, among the kings of the earth will ever be able to match with you. And wisdom brought a, a, a Solomon to influence and influence. I don't know who you are. By your love for God, I see wisdom answer for you. Yeah. Did I hear a lot of amen? Yeah. Can you see that young boy called David? David loved God. He was a man after God's heart. You can know a man that loved God by knowing what is in his heart for God. 
when your heart is after God and the advancement of his kingdom and the soul to be won, then you are a candidate for his wisdom. David so loved God. That was the credential of David. Then look at what happened. David behaved himself wisely. If you look at 1 Samuel 18 and verse 14 and verse 30, he said, and David behaved himself wisely. You know, some people lose marriage, very good marriages. They lose businesses, very good businesses. They lose customer. You know why? Not because of witches. Just one foolishness, just one, just one, just one foolishness. Wisdom secures you from foolishness. It may be a foolish company. Wisdom. 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 Wisdom keeps you. Look, it takes you up and keeps you up. You can have anointing. If you don't have wisdom, it may, you may still crash. A very good, I've seen good marriages crash just because of foolish talk, foolish appearance, foolish reactions. Any small thing you pack, any small thing you pack. The next time you call, the door may be closed. Permanent cloaking. The man that had, now, it was told about that in business church, business meeting. Now, the man that had the first American billionaire, John G. Rockefeller, he was a Bible believer. His, his middle, his, his appellation is monopoly. All oil and gas in America is the one that handles it. It became a threat to the United Nations uh, legislator. Anything he says, he decides the market, he decides the price. It was to insure the Titanic. They have concluded, insurance company told him, look, just go ahead. They have, even the people that built Titanic say, even God cannot stop it. It was an insult. And God said, I've had everything. So he had every assurance. But he was to sign that paper and went back home and said, Lord, what are you saying? That's wisdom. Consulting with God. Making God first. And God said, don't. So he came back to the following day and said, no, I'm not involved. I, I don't want to be involved. He said, but it's a, it's a, good, it's a very good business. Said, I'm not going to be involved. I know what happened to Titanic. You will not take foolish steps anymore. So one of the things you stand to gain is wisdom. David said, this same David, this David now, in that Second Kings, Second Samuel, sorry, Second Samuel 14 and verse 20. They said about David, and the wisdom of David was like the wisdom of the God, of the angels. The wisdom of David was like the wisdom of angels. He was running, the wisdom on him was at angelic frequency. And David said, the reason why I never lost a battle. Psalm 119 and verse 18, 98. He said, because I'm wiser than my enemies. Psalm 119 verse 98. I'm wiser. He has made me wiser. You will not lose ground anymore. Yeah. I'm not sure I heard it very loudly. Yeah. So, the love of God makes you to assess the wisdom of God. It makes you to assess the wisdom of God. Everywhere foolishness has reigned it at in the life of anyone. The Bible says wisdom is justified of our children. You are a child of the most wise king. Everything that is taking advantage of lack of wisdom in your life is turned around today in the name of Jesus. He said the labor of the foolish. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. It wearies everyone because he does not know the way to the city. When wisdom comes, you know the way. You know the right action, the right speech, the right posture. The right, everything goes right. That will become your testimony this time. Yeah. Whatever has not been working in your businesses, I say begin to work for you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. What more? The wisdom of God gives you, it empowers you, it empowers our faith to deliver maximally the love of God. When you walk in the love of God, your faith delivers maximally. First Corinthians 13 and verse 2. It says, even if I have faith to move mountain and I have no law. It says, I am just 
Look at it, verse 2. He said, Though I have the gift of prophecy and to understand and understand all mystery and knowledge, and though I have faith, I have all faith, so I could remove mountains, and I have no charity, I am nothing. That means faith will not walk without love. Faith will fail without love. When you walk in the love of God, it facilitates your faith. It empowers your faith to walk. That's why that scripture says in, uh, in Galatians 5 and verse 6, it says faith walketh by love. Wait, faith. Faith becomes motionless when love is not in place. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by impartation. But no matter how much you have had, no matter how much faith you are building, if the love of God is not in place, faith will not work as you expect. But for faith to deliver, that is what love does. Your love for God makes faith to work. Today, I see your faith working. I did not hear you at all. I see your faith working. If you are that person, I'd like you to go ahead and pray to God as a partake of the communion. Stir up my love, oh God. Stir up my love afresh. Whatever is taking away my love from you, take it out of the way. Every carnality, every distraction, taking away my love for your kingdom and for your, the interests of your kingdom, Lord, take it out of the way. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Revelation 2 and verse 4, it says, return to your first love. He said, I have, a, I have something against you. He said, return to your first love. Somebody, I see a restoration for you this morning. Amen. Now quickly, in this <laughs> business covenant, business breakthrough service, whatever business has broken down, there shall be breakthrough for you. Amen. I did not hear you at all. Amen. Every broken down consultancy, every indebtedness in your business, every business that has been overshadowed by economic climate, every business that has been overshadowed by competitors, every business that is nose diving, you are producing less than you can maintain. Your recurrent is more than your capital. I don't know who you are. By this service today, I see breakthrough answer for you. May I ask somebody here, how many people are in business here? Let me see your hand. All right, I have business people here. Now put that here. If you did not raise your hand before, raise it now. Raise it now. Raise it now. Raise it very high. Do like this. So that I can see you very well. Raise it. If I stand up. Stand up now. That means this service is not for you. The first part you just had is the one you need to hear. So we need to excuse them. Should we excuse them? Oh, somebody is standing up in the choir. <laughs> now sit down. Listen to me now. Your life is business. Your destiny is business. Your academics is business. Business is any endeavor. You are involving expecting profit or you expect result. That is business. Someone, you are, you, are, you are provoking me seriously. Someone, verse 1, down to verse 3. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of ungodly, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, nor stand in the way of sinners, but is Delight is in the law of the law, and in need does it meditate day and night. Look at the next thing, verse 3, everybody. It said, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and its leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever... Let me ask your neighbor, what are you doing? You do nothing, you see nothing. You do nothing, you have nothing. Now, don't be deceived. If you are a giver and you are not a doer, when the rain of blessing comes, it will turn to erosion.
you are <laughs> Luke 19 and verse 13. Jesus himself said, Occupy till I come. That means do business till I come. Look, don't just make money, let your money work for you. That's business. Occupy till I come. Do business till I come. Psalm 90 and verse 17. Psalm 90 and verse 17. Can we read together? Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Establish the work of our hand upon us. Yea, the works of our hand. Establish thou it. What you read from school, I mean, what the job you are looking, there's a difference between work and job. What you apply for is job. What you are wired for is work. They can sack you from job, but they cannot sack you from your work. Somebody here, you are wired for entertainment. Somebody here, you are wired for invention. Somebody here, you are wired to train people. Somebody here, you are wired as a consultant. Somebody here, you are wired as a, an anointed mechanic. Somebody here, you are wired as a medical personality. Whatever you are wired for, I see you prospering in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I like us to know that God wants to use your business to fulfill your destiny. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 12 he said and the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure and bring down rain upon the work of their hand and because of that rain you will lend to many nations now one of the reasons why we have breakdown is some people are even in business and they don't have an objective some have business and their foundation and their packaging is is so bad they, are, they may be good they may even have you see the business you will prosper in among many things is the business that goes with your passion you are selling shoe but you don't like ways you are selling food and you don't know how to cook it can't work one of the things that make business to prosper is number one find a need Number two, understand your passion. Number three, take advantage of the opportunity within your environment. Behind every need is an answer to a business. If children are crying too much, go and make an app that will make them not to cry. Every problem you solve to meet human need is a business. So you must understand that opportunity for business is just too much. And it's my prayer today that your business will succeed. Amen. Before I go further, if you have discovered your business, please give it a name. And give it a sweet name. Some businesses are good but they have very long name. It's a Chukwe, Mecca, uh, Chinedu, Giningori, group of company, Intercontinental Global. <laughs> that name is scary. If a foreigner comes, he cannot read that name. He will just say, Chuku, just Chuku, let me go and say Chuku. Praise the Lord. May I say to, to you, there are three personalities. I pray God will give me time now. Three persons that's involved in your business. And that's one of the reasons why people fail in business. I will we'll look at how, why people fail in business and look at a business reference of our covenant father. One of the reasons you fail, people fail in business is they fail to recognize three personalities in the business. 
The number one personality is you. The number two personality is God. If you read our scripture, Isaiah 48 and verse 17, I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee in the way to go, that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go and teacheth thee to prosper. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to make profit. So, God is involved, you are involved. Who is the third person? The third person is your business. That's why I say give your business a name. And give it a sweet name. Give it a registered name. You are selling, uh, you, are, you are into confectionery, you sell food. They say, what's your name? He say, Mama Maker uh, Jollof Rice Company. If they want to give you one, if they want you to serve a convention of a party that is coming. I have a woman, she's in Abuja, she's a chartered accountant, but all the conventions they wear, she's just serving them water. They just give her a call, and when they give her a call, she knows what it is. She already have her own men and women. What they do, they remove the, 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 the they go and buy a bottle of water and remove the label and put the label of the party. They will do that overnight and supply. That's her job. There are opportunities everywhere. In schools, there are opportunity. In hospitals, there are opportunity. In software, there are opportunity. In fact, one of the major assets of opportunity right now is in the internet. And with AI coming in, huh, every of your business must be AI compliance. I read last two weeks, a, a church in Germany had an AI service. That's where it's going to. AI was preaching to them. Praise the Lord. So the third person is the business. And every person has bread. What makes a person is a bean. It has bread. If, if somebody's by you, you slap him. I say, don't know. It means you have ignored him. So treat your business like a person. Say, business, we are going to move now. This is how we are going to move. Please be careful the way we are moving. That's why you see somebody in business, all the business money is in his back pocket. As he's going, shaking. Shawama. Shawa. Shawa. Shawa one. Shawa two. Shawa three. Now, all the money, he has removed one leg of the business. Say, oh, you didn't go, you are, okay, you take this one. He has moved the second leg. Then, so I'm, I'm going to the village and just pray money. He has removed the two hands. So, what is remaining? No, just tell me what's remaining. The business is crying. Ah, emergency, emergency, ICT, ICT. He said, for where? He removed the intestine. So, <laughs> Treat your business like a person. Give it respect. Have an account. Have a record. Have a projection. Have a purpose. Make registration. You want to supply oil and gas company. You want to go to uh, doing those businesses. There are a lot of documentation you have to have. You don't even, you are not even registered yet, then you want to be a millionaire. That, how, how is it possible? Even if you are selling rice now, and you don't have a business name, your business is not registered, you still need a lawyer to, you need a banker, you need to register that thing. So, I want to advise somebody here, change your mindset. Because you will not die where you are there. Where you are will be the least place you will ever be. I did not hear you at all. Yeah. Some people are in business just to survive. That is too elementary. So the day they don't go to market, that is a dead day. If it doesn't go for one week, ah, yeah, it's dead. Your business will outshine you. You did not hear me. Yeah. Your business will outshine you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Why business? Quickly. Why business? Luke 19 and verse 13, occupy till I come, Jesus said it. 
Why business? Luke 2 and verse 49, Jesus said, don't you know I must go about my father's business? My friend, right now I'm in a business. My business is to tell somebody the right thing to do in order to break through. My business is to make sure that you tap into the covenant for your business exploit. My business is that you go out of this place and become a business commodity. That's what I see. My business is to make sure that where you are now before you came to this service is the least place you will ever be. That's my business. One survivor. Luke 9 and verse 10. I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. He said, whatever your hands fight to do, do it. Just doing something. Just doing something to survive. Then you have, why do we do this? To tap into the covenant blessing. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 12. Why? Business. To fulfill your purpose. To fulfill your purpose. Genesis 12, verse 1 to 4. Number 4. To seize opportunity. To take advantage of opportunity. Luke 19 and verse 13. Number 5. To change your financial status. From mini to mega. From million to multi-million. From multi-million to billion. That person is in this service right now. You did not hear me. I'm talking to a millionaire in this service. You know why many businesses fail? It is said from statistics. Out of 10 businesses, many of them, only about five survived the first one year. Then, only about two or three survived the next five years. You know one of the reasons? People pursue money rather than pursuing solution. You didn't hear me. If the reason why you want to open the restaurant is that I just want to make money, you may not stay long. But if the purpose is I want people to eat well, I want them to have cheaper food, eating well is my concern. My concern is that then you will stay long in that business. Many people open school. Say, I want to open school. They say, why? Ah, there's money in school. Most of the hotels, you see, this state has the highest number of hotels in this country. More than 300 hotels. But most of, most of these hotels, they are not trained at all. I was telling one of us that day, they say, you are looking for a job. A job for what? Tell them, go and, st and, and organize a seminar on hotel management and training of staff of hotel from accounting to room service and all of them and front desk officers and tell them it's cheap in fact you are not paying anything they will rush there when they finish you say for you to know that you finish this school you pay 20,000 certificate if you want, and, and, not, and when I leave this place I'm not coming back you, you get a certificate now or never. If 300 people come, 20 times 200, how much is that? I said 20 times 200, accountant. You don't have accountant here? 20 times 300, what is that? You don't know? All right. That is instant money for you. We have so many problems all around. Your eyes will find it by this coming on today. Yeah. Our time is up. Very quickly. All our covenant fathers are business people. Abraham was in hus animal husbandry. That's in Genesis 13 and verse 2. Isaac was a <laughs> irrigation farmer. You see that in Genesis 26 and verse 1 to verse 16. Jacob was a man. Now, Jacob was employed for many years, for more than 20 years, and he remained on the same spot. Buried inside of him was the covenant. But one year, Jacob began business. Genesis 30, verse 27 to verse 33. Genesis 30, 27 to 33. What he couldn't get for 20 years, he got it in one year. 
Jacob is the one that started apprenticeship for seven years. Then you get free. Whatever you are doing now, you got it from Jacob. All covenant father. So I would say, look, Abraham, I mean, Solomon was full of wisdom. Solomon was a consultant, my friend. The kings of the earth come to see him. He, he wrote 1,000 proverbs. I mean, 3,000 proverbs and 1,000 songs. He gives consultancy on management. Give consultancy on security. They were paying tribute to him. Look, you do nothing, you get nothing, my friend. Listen to me. You are not in business until... I, I, I mark this very strongly. You are not in business. You are not in business until you render goods or services. If you don't have a goods, you don't have a service, you are not in business. I have some group of people in this, in this church. I saw them in the first service. They came in all the way from Lagos. What did they come to do? They came to service one major company in this, in this state, their gas generator. They've been here for one week now just to render that service and find out how much they will get. If you are not in a good, producing goods, you are not in a service, you are not in business. So find a goods to, to produce and find a service to render, then profit and reward will come your way. Now quickly, we look at the example of Abraham this morning like we did in the first service. The, the secret of men are in their what? The, the secret of men and is in their stories. When you hear the story of men, you know their secret. Hebrews 6 and verse 12. It says, follow them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. So if you follow the path of Abraham, and Abraham was blessed in all things. Genesis 20, 24 and verse 1. He was blessed in all things. That will be your order of blessing. I did not hear you at all. I, if you get to any of the supermarkets, look for Henry Hayes. I used to tell people, any place you enter and they say supermarket, you don't have any Arrhenius product, it's a shop. That man has died. That man was a Bible believer, a Bible study person, and when he was dying, he said, right on his grave, church man. He started that business at the age of 11. He was, he was moving with Barrow. Then he had 59 recipes. Uh, big beans, uh, what is it? tomato ketchup, and all that. Your business will outlive you. You did not? Okay, come. What were the secrets of Abraham? Number one. Number one, are you there? Number one, Abraham made God his senior partner. He made God his senior partner. You know, I told you that God is involved. He made God, that means Anything he wants to do in that business, God is the reference point. Genesis 17 and verse 1. He made God a senior partner. Number two, Abraham was led by God. That means you are not just alone in that business. If God is your senior partner, he will show you. Genesis 12 and verse 1. God said to Abraham, come out of your kingdom, I will show you. What did God show Abraham? Genesis 12 and verse 1. He said, I will show you. Genesis 13 and verse 2, he showed him cattle. And it, he sold the cattle, he got gold and silver. God will show you a good business this time. Yeah. I did not hear you at all. Yeah. Do you know this pure water you drink is started by a believer? God said to that, he's a woman, he says, start in Lagos. You see, a good business can also be something you have seen somewhere that is not where you are and is needed. Well, quickly, number three. Are we there? Number three. Abraham was a kingdom dreamer. So dream kingdom dreams. Look beyond where you are. Project into the future. Change your mindset. You will not remain where you are forever. Have a projection to the future. Now you shall have that in Genesis 13 and verse 14. He said, look from where you are. Look from where you are. You must be a dreamer to maximize what God has for you for your business breakthrough. Number four. Are we number four now? Have faith. Have faith in God. Have faith in yourself. And have faith in the business. This business will prosper. 
Listen to me. God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, had faith. He had faith that this commission will work. Mama was in Indolori. God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, went to Kaduna. And every time he returned back to Indolori, he tells Mama, oh, it was a great service. They are not more, up to 12. Oh. 12 people. And he left Indolori the where they were already having up to 100 people. He said it was a great service. We had a great time. Journey from Kaduna, Ilori to Kaduna is six hours by road. The day Mama came there and sat down, when they say, let us share the goodness, she said, are you starting service or you are just about to go? Let me continue quickly. Well, number five, be a giver. Be Libra. Abraham was a Libra person. Proverbs 11, verse 25, 24, 25. He was not just a giver. Number six, Abraham was a tighter. He was tightening for his own business. You see that in Genesis 14 and verse 18 to verse 20. Hebrews 7 and verse 7. Number seven, Abraham was diligent. Genesis 13 and verse 2. That's why he could, he could take care of cattle and cattle became money. Gold and silver in his hand. It was diligent. You see, diligence makes, your, makes you to be identified with your business. Well, number eight, Abraham was a man of integrity. Proverbs 28 and verse 20. Proverbs 11 and verse 3. Number nine, Abraham was a resource manager and multiplier of resources. He used what he had to get what he wanted. And he also manages resources. Some people, the reason why the business is breaking down, you are not a good manager. You are not faithful with your money. You are not faithful with your personnel. You are not faithful with your resources. He was a good manager of resources. Proverbs, uh, Genesis 14, and verse 14 to verse 21. He, he had one, eight, 318 men. Instead of them eating and drinking in the house, he made them to become an army. He was training them. He managed the resource. Most of you, the business you are looking for is already in your house. There's something in your house you can begin. Well, number 10. I think that's number 10 now. Or number 9. Number 10. Abraham was a servant of God. Psalms 105, verse 42. He served God. As you serve God, he said, will bless your bread and your water. It will take sickness away from you. I see God, bringing about breakthrough your way. Come on, jump to your feet. And just tell him, I want to serve you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Stir up your love in my heart. 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 Everyone standing to your feet, go ahead and express yourself to him. Stir up your love in my heart. Stir up your love in my heart. Stir up your love in my heart. Love is the jackpot of breakthrough in this kingdom. Love is the backbone of breakthrough in this kingdom. Go ahead and talk to him. When you love him, he shows you secret to do with that service, to do with that product for your turnaround. In Jesus' mighty name. Bow your heads, everyone. I'd like to pray for somebody in this service. You are here in this service and everything is breaking down. But Jesus said, I have come for your breakthrough. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Not that alone. When you receive Jesus in your heart, you are empowered for breakthrough. John 1 and verse 12. It says, as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the son of God. You become a breakthrough entity when you receive Jesus in your heart. And your name is written in the book of life. You have assurance of eternity. I want to pray for someone like that this morning. You're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to receive Jesus in my heart as my Lord and Savior. Man or woman, wherever you are, I want to pray for you. You are also here this morning. You got born again sometime, but you lost it. You missed it because of, of, of carelessness or whatever. Out of pressure, you can be restored this morning. In these two categories, everyone bow your heads. You're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. Put your right hand on your chest. Put that hand on your chest. Speak to Jesus. Talk to him. He hears you right there. Tell him, Jesus, come into my heart. I, I like you to come into my heart this morning. 
Now say this prayer with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. Save me. Deliver me from the power of sin and Satan. Cleanse me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today I will serve you. In Jesus' mighty name I have prayed. If you just prayed that prayer, come on, wave your hand this way for me. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone that prayed that prayer, God bless you. God bless you. Something that just happened to you, I can see your hands there. i like to pray for you. Everyone that prayed that prayer, take your Bible, take your book, take whatever you came to church with, take your children, make your way right here. Usher, save them out. I want to pray for them before we round up this service, before we partake of the communion. I wanted to make your way right here. God bless you. Church, I told you I'm clapping for them. I told you I'm clapping for them. Everyone that prayed a prayer, God bless you. Make your way right here. Church, I told you I'm still clapping. There's nothing to hold back. Make your way right here. Don't lose this opportunity. Don't lose this opportunity. Don't allow someone else to take your place. This is your day. This is your day. Don't allow someone to take your place. We came one by one. We will return by one by one. Don't allow someone to take your place. There's nothing to hold back anymore. Make your way right here. Church, I thought you are. I thought you are excited. There's joy in heaven right now. 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 I thought you are excited. There's joy in heaven right now. There's joy in heaven right now. There's joy. You are the only one remaining. You are the only one waiting for you. I know I'm waiting for you, that man, that woman. I'm waiting for you. You are the only one remaining there. Are you still clapping? Everyone be seated. God bless you. Before I pray for them, if you are watching for the first time on a Sunday morning, if you are watching for the first time on a Sunday morning, please rise to your feet. Anywhere you are this morning, it's your first time on a Sunday morning, here in Winners Chapel, Port Harcourt Road, Oweri. Please rest your face. Church, clap for them. I'd like you to pick your back and your Bible and make your way to this other side. God bless you. Church, clap for them. Clap for them. Clap for them. Now, every one of you, I'll pray with you. 42 years ago, I came out like this on a Sunday morning. And I have never been the same. I'll pray with you. Your confession and declaration will be forever in Jesus' name. Bow your heads. Father... Thank you for this precious soul. Thank you for bringing them to the kingdom this morning. Thank you for forgiving their sins. Lord, I pray that your hand has come upon them today will be forever. Every handwriting of hell and, and wickedness over their life is broken right now. The grace of God, the love of God, the power of God begin to speak in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Please, I'd like you to turn. Look at that pastor. Look at him. I'd like you to go with him. God bless you. Just turn with him. He has something to give to you. Now, you are here for the first time on a Sunday morning. What a joy. You cannot come before the King of Kings and go back empty. So what do you desire? Father, I pray for their desires. Grant their desire this week. And let it be for a testimony. As they return here next time, it shall be a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please, I'd like you to also turn this way and go with the officials. Now, Luke 24, and verse 30 and 31. Everyone rise to your feet. Luke 24, 30 and 31. And when they broke the bread, the Bible says, their eyes were open. As you go from this mountain, and as you partake of this table, God is opening your eyes. Anyone called sick, as you partake of this table, receive your healing already. The table is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated as we partake of the same. Ushers, direct them briskly. And please, let's move briskly so that we can make do with this communion time.
thank him. Go ahead and begin to thank him. Go ahead and begin to thank him for the blessing I receive. This week shall be your week of prosperity. It shall be your week of profiting. Wherever you are broken down, whatever is failing, begin to jack up this week for you in the name of Jesus. Every business represented here this morning, I demand breakthrough on every side for you in the name of Jesus. Every satanic siege bringing about breakdown in your body, in your businesses, I command an end to that siege in the name of Jesus. I speak over your businesses. Go and prosper. Now, do your hand like this. This hand will be prosperous hand this week. Everything you lay hand, this hands to do. I speak that the God of this commission and the graces that answered in this commission answer in these hands in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. For your confusion, receive divine direction. For your breakdown, go and break through. Your covenant highway testimony is born by this service today. You will get favor this week. They will send back for you this week. Those will be open for you this week. In the name of Jesus. If you came after we have taken our offering, the bucket is right there for you to drop your offering. How many of you were in the all night? How many of you connected to the all night? The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The impartation you receive shall be with you forever in Jesus' name. Shall we share the goodness together in fellowship? God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. And finally on the covenant highway of life. Congratulations. Amen and amen.